And a very good morning to you boys and girls. It's Saturday the 20th of April 2013. A warm welcome along to today's United Kingdom talk. Took me a little while to get going this morning. Uh, as you probably know, we now record this show on Friday mornings. You're always welcome to join us, boys and girls, uh, if you want to. And uh, for the first time this morning, as I say, it took us a little while to get going because we're trying a new system. We're trying the YouTube live streaming thing, which I hope is doing all right. Now, I will only know, OK, if you tell me. If you say nothing, I'll assume that everything's working all right. And, uh, and uh, that's it. I must turn this picture of me off. There's a, p- <laughs> There's a picture of me right in front of me there. It's putting me off. That's it. That's it. Ben. C- can't be seeing myself. Thank you very much. We can't be seeing myself. Uh, so I will only know that it's working okay if those of you who are with us for the live recording are going to tell me. Now, there's various ways of communicating with the show, and I've even got a little, little thing here which I hope will come up. There we are. Uh, you can Skype in. My Skype username is all one word, Chris Reardon, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. Okay, Skype username is Chris Reardon. And there's a phone number as well if you'd like to dial in. That's an old term now. No one dials anymore, do they? Do you remember? You remember had a dial on the phone? Do you remember you had a dial on the phone? Do you remember that? Not now. Boring old push buttons. Very American, dear. Do remember this is not the United States of America. This is the United Kingdom. Land of hope and glory, isn't it? It's the United Kingdom, dear. Okay? It's not the United States. <clears throat> anyway, so that, that all works quite nicely. Uh, if you want to phone in, I have a local London number. Now, I stress this is not a premium rate number because those people that use 0845 numbers are just basically greedy bastards. They are greedy bastards. Absolutely not. No, I have a cheap old, a cheap old London number for you. 020 8133 okay? 020 8133 As I say, we're trying the, um, uh, the YouTube live streaming today. Uh, we have been using Ustream, which has been fine. The quality has been very good, but... They keep chucking in bloody adverts, dear. I've got no... I I wouldn't mind. You know, I'd be the first one to get out a tube of signal toothpaste here on the show if I thought I was going to get something from it. But I'm not. There's nothing for me. Nothing. There's nothing nothing for me. There's nothing for me in this world at all. Not fame, not happiness, not love, not money. Nothing. There's nothing for me in this world. Just this sad little hobby of mine that I spend twice a week coming to talk to you. That's all there is. So there's nothing for me. So you stream, they, they chuck an ad in and it's, it's, it's not like there's one every half an hour, you know, or... It's not like there's one every... I mean, it wouldn't even matter so so much if it was one every 15 minutes or two every 15... or three every 15 minutes. But they don't tell me, okay? So I could be talking to you in full stream, going at full power, 200 mile an hour like an Intercity 125, which actually doesn't do 200 mile an hour. It only does 125 mile an hour. And there's much faster trains now. Dare I tell you, and please don't let members of the United Kingdom government uh, 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 tell you this, okay? Um, but dare I tell... I hate saying... I hate, hate it when people are better than us. Just a minute, let me see if there's anyone listening from the government. Nope, it's all very, very quiet. Dare I tell you that the French and the Japanese have much faster trains than us. I know! Terrible! Here we are, the United Kingdom, the bastion of world technology, only to know, only to know, and I hate to admit this live on air, boys and girls, the French and the Japanese and probably other countries have faster trains than us. Have you ever been on that French TG5 or whatever it's called? I don't know what it is. Christ almighty. When you go through the Channel Tunnel, and I've done it twice, and I'm not not keen on tunnels myself, I've gone through the Channel Tunnel, right? And you kind of, 
go slowly through the England bit. And you, th you think you're going fast. OK, sitting there, you know, looking out. Oh, it's quite fast, you know, better than driving. I love trains. And then it goes under the tunnel and it comes up the hill after the tunnel and suddenly the driver, he, he, he goes... He, he, I don't know what he does. He I was going to say he, he puts his foot down. He, pu he pushes this button and this thing just takes off. I love the French trains. Have you ever been on one of those French trains, I wonder? Anyway, they're much, much faster than us, dear. Much faster than us. And I hate to admit that. I really do. Oh, look who it is. Fagash Lille. Good morning, Fagash Lille. How long is it since I spoke to you, my dear? We were starting to get concerned about you, Fagash. I was watching a, a, a funeral on the other te on the telly just yesterday. Or was it the day before? The day before yesterday. I thought, oh my God, no, it's not Fagash Lil. And it's not. I'm so pleased it's not. She's actually with us this morning via Skype. Good morning, Fagash Lil. Who says, looking good so far. I assume you're talking about the quality of the picture and not necessarily the bloke behind the in front of the camera. I'm just assuming that, Fagash Lil. Eh? Would I be right there? Good morning to you, Marge. Good morning, Marge. Who says, I'll get someone on and maybe you can flick between the two. Oh, no, don't do that, Marge. That... <laughs> I like to test things out first. Let's not start flicking between the two. In actual fact, Marge, <clears throat> I've been quite clever this morning. And as well as going on the YouTube, on the YouTube uh, live thing, uh, I've also managed to go on Ustream as well at the same time because we had a little little thing on there saying that this is going to be on <coughs> um, Friday at 10.30. And anyone who, people that are on, that there are people that just use Ustream. It's like a little, uh, I don't know, a little club or something like that. And um, they would have expected a show to be there. So that's why I went on there as well. All right. Good morning, Marge, in uh, Oklahoma. Oh, Oklahoma. And good morning. To Guillermo. Good morning, Guillermo. How are you, sir? In the United States, in San Francisco. Is there a song about San Francisco? Yes, there is. San Francisco. What's that song now? Is it a 60s number? I think it's a 60s number. Something like that. So we got Marge in Oklahoma. We got uh, in, um, in um, San Francisco. Uh, Marge, oh, she's calling in. Good morning, Marge. Good morning. And how are you on this? Uh, is it? Is it? Has the sun come up in Oklahoma yet? Not at four thirty in the morning. <laughs> is this working? It's all out right? there, but it's not here. <laughs> is this working all right for you, Marge? Just a minute. Let me get. Let me turn up the volume. The volume's a little lower than the YouTube we on love, Skype. We love your accent, Marge. I'll get my headset oh, okay. set up here better. Plug in. Okay. Plug in, dear. Dear. Um, yeah, it's okay. Good. Good. Yeah. We like to get blown away the other day. Is it better that you, you had what? <laughs> we like to get blown away the other day, the tornado. Oh, yes, I remember seeing that on Facebook. What, did, did it come close by? Well, it was about an hour west of me. Oh, that, that's quite a way then, isn't it? Uh, quite a long way. Yeah, well, Ooh. actually, that's close. <laughs> when, it, I'm, when tornadoes are around, you know, you never know which direction they're going. Right. I mean, all of a sudden, they can... Sw Have you ever watched the movie Twister? Or Tornado, I think it was a Twister. Um, you ever seen... No, never seen that one, Marge. Well, okay. Um, anyway, they show this, this, these storm chasers, you know, yes. and uh, they think, oh, it's going this direction, and they got right, right up to it, you know, and all of a sudden, they'll change. I mean, they'll just all of a sudden go the other direction. Yeah. So, you never know, just because it's right there, you know, oh, it's going to pass me, because they'll all of a sudden change, and, <laughs> and then they're coming your, your direction. So, Ooh. I was in the cellar. Um, it was not too bad. It was small. It did a little damage. That's scary. That is scary. I don't it's think I'd a like a tornado. We don't have anything like that at all here, Marge. You never get tornadoes at all? No, no. We, we would never get a tornado here. No hurricanes, no tornadoes, no ice storms, nothing like that here. No. I think, no. I think it's because of the mountains, you know, the mountain range that goes up and uh, between the, uh, uh, well, 
they go from south to north anyway yes. that wind comes over that and then the heat from the you know one direction comes in and then you one got direction. the cold one way or another da, da, da. <laughs> you don't know one direction do you well, I mean, uh, well, I meant the the mountain range where the wind comes over the mountains. No. It causes there, there's there's a pop group now called One Direction. You've never heard of them, have you? Oh, I don't know. My my brain goes in ten directions at once. So <laughs> <laughs> they're a silly little girly boy band that all the, all the well, girls well, are going all well, the girls yeah, are going crazy for them at the moment. Oh yeah, it goes one way. Oh, the other. That's the one, I'm that's the one, you. yes, I'm yes. I'm going to get you, get you, get you, get you one way. Well, funnily <laughs> enough, Marge, that's, that's a little story of mine in a minute. So we we'll go on to that. Tell me more about your tornado, though. So okay. if, if a tornado is an hour away, okay, mm-hmm. how long, if it was coming for you, how long would that take to get to you? Half an hour or, or what? It depends on the speed. And we have different types of tornadoes. We got like a little mild, like a dust devil, you know, just a small thing. That's what I call them. Yeah. But anyway, they got F1, F2, F3, F4, F5. Now, F5, you're, you're talking 300 mile per hour when they say there's no re- way a, a, a tornado can go that fast. But they, that, that did that one year uh, in May. Uh, 300 mile an hour. Well, it moves towards uh, you at 300 miles an hour. It's spinning, I think, counterclockwise, whatever the, 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 I think it's counterclockwise down here. Yes. I need to st- read up on this before I t- comment about it. I th- I'm not remembering. <laughs> anyway, a few years ago, a friend of mine got killed in one. Uh, she was a local restaurant owner. Right. About 20, she just had her birthday. She just turned 22. Oh, no. Had two, had two children. And she's very friendly, and they were coming home from Oklahoma City, and they had to, they got under the viaduct, the overpass, you know, and that's the worst place you want to get. Do, well, you know, you don't, you know, and that makes that doesn't make sense because the way it does, that wind will suck. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little echo from you. Um, the wind will pull you out, and it, she weighed about ninety pounds. I mean, she's very skinny, right? And it sucked her out from under the overpass, and they didn't <clears> find her for about, about a week. <clears throat> Later, and she was under a bunch of, of, of boards and stuff in the pond, mm. a local pond there, about about 150 feet. It had thrown her, and they couldn't find her for about a week. And they and she finally they finally did. But no, this storm last week, or this, I'm sorry, sorry, the other day, um, it was it did a little damage, but it was out in the country. Yes. So and uh, but it does. It depends on how fast the you know the wind's blowing. And the speed and everything, you can't tell until you know all those factors, like where it's going to come to. Right. But you know, we've, get a, we've got a great warning system here. Ha, ha, I mean, we've got what, the what internet. Happens? We've got What happens storm- when a tornado is coming? What, is it just like news? Do they have loudspeakers everywhere? A bit like a... Oh, uh, we've got a... Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sound it makes. <laughs> Do that again for me, Marge. I think we'll have that again. Godzilla's coming. (laughs) (laughs) That's what I always thought when I was a kid, like Godzilla. You know, when you had these (laughs) giant monsters coming. (laughs) So, um, yeah, we've got all, we've got the cell phone. They'll call you if you have that set up for texting. They'll call you, you know, and tell you there's a storm coming. Of course, you got the television. They just text everyone, do they? They text you if you've got that. I don't have that on my phone, but uh, they'll send you a warning there. Or people have weather weather radios. Weather you can radio, buy those. Yeah. Was, is is, is this like a special? Is it like a, a, a station? Is it? Is it like a specific station or, or a specific <laughs> box? Yeah, there's actually a computer. The air, the weather in your area has issued a tornado warning in the effect in your county. <laughs> That's the computer voice. You, you, could be, like, you could do the voice of the com- You could be that voice, I think, Marge. I thought that was very professional. <laughs> well, at 4.30 <laughs> in the morning, I don't know if I can or not. <laughs> uh, I love to get one of these radios because it's got a crank. You yeah. can crank it. And it'll stay charged for er- several hours. Okay, it's got a, it's got a flashlight. Yeah. Sorry, uh, uh, one of those uh, winding things. Yeah, winding. You, you wind it yeah, up. it winds up, and it's got a head, <clears throat> head a flashlight built in. Do you and, know a, 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 a British a British bloke uh, invented that? I think his name was Bailey's Bayliss or something like that. Yeah, and they're not yeah. that expensive. 
Actually, I, they have to call in there once in a while. You can win one, but I never get on. <laughs> I never those, were, those were invented, I think, for people in countries that don't have electric, very, very poor countries uh, where they don't have electricity. There are, there are still places in the world that don't have electricity. Well, probably not whole countries, huh? but certainly so areas. And um, that's, that's why he invented those, so that they could uh, stay in contact with the world, Marge. Well, I'll tell you, we do have a really wonderful, you know, weather people here they yes. they keep on top of it the only thing sometimes they get carried away with you know i don't know if it's carried away or not but it may, they make it sound a little bit worse than it is right you know I went, I went into the cellar twice and here at marla we didn't get anything we got a little little sprinkle oh they got a you oh, got yeah, the, but, uh but, but 70 a, mile per hour wind coming your way marlo we got hail size of the court you know ha- and it was nothing we, it, uh, well, safe than it, was sorry, tri- marge. it was a good trial run you know go to the cellar better safe than sorry marge yeah, that's what I said. I mean, it's, they're not crying wolf because that's the way the weather is here. You yes, can't yes. predict it that good. I mean, it has to be so many things. It can just pop up in 30. It has done this. It has popped up in 30 minutes, dropped a tornado, wiped out a town, and then be, be over. And there's no warning, no possible way of, of you know, that's right. how it works. It's scary. It, <laughs> it, it, would, it, it would take, you, you've never been hit by one yourself, have you? I've been in a tornado, but uh, in the cellar. I mean, I was, I heard it, I felt it. I mean, it, it was like a train. It goes, you know how a train sounds. Yes. And then yeah. your, then your head feels like it's in a a, a a vice, and your your brain's wanting to come out of its skull. Why it's is the pressure? The pressure, the pressure rises so high. Right. And your ears will start popping. It's a strange feeling. I mean, That's your heart a, will race, I, you know, I, I of course. Don't think I'd, I, I, mean, I, oh, I don't think I'd like that. That sounds really <laughs> scary. Really it's scary. Exi- it's exciting. Uh, when, if you're not say, where you're going to get hurt, it's very exciting because it's something, wow, this is a this is nature. This yeah, well, is something that shows I, you how when, little we are, you know? When I was on um, Norfolk Island in the South Pacific the last time, uh, a couple of years ago now, um, they were on a cyclone warning. Now, cyclone is the same as a hurricane. They do, I think it's they use a different word for it in Australia. Mm-hmm. And um, I, I remember was on. So we were on this tiny island, and the radio station stayed on the air all night, and all this, and everyone was, you know, doing things to prepare. And they were all quite. Some people were a little bit scared. I was just excited by the whole thing. I don't know if that's the right attitude to take or not. <laughs> no, that's the way that we're I, made. I, you know what? I believe that we're not the fullest alive until we're near death. Well, yeah. That's why and people I, I climb was, I was mountains just... because of the, the exhilaration. They're in that moment. They are fully alive. Yes. And that's what I mean. We're, 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 we've got this little <laughs> I was just, I was just rush, in my, you um, know? I was just in my little little hotel, like a what do you call it? Like a lodge, almost like a lodge. You know, not not like a hotel like blocks. So were like single rooms, like little bungalows. Would you call them a bungalow, or something like you know? Do, do, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I don't so I was just in there, and and this this wind was you could feel it pushing the wind, uh, the the windows. I think that's they were a bunker. Creaking. A bunker. A bunker. You're talking about, isn't it? Absolutely, they they were creaking these windows, and uh, I, I, I was just excited by the whole thing. The curtains were moving as well, and yeah. uh, I found out eventually. I went to sleep, and in the morning, I found out that the cyclone actually came towards the island, and at the last minute, turned off. As indeed it always does. They told us the last one that hit them, the last cyclone that hit them, I think, was way back in the seventies, and often they have them come towards them. And for whatever reason, they turn off at the last minute and go the other way, yeah. and no one knows. Yeah, why. I, I have had, you know, of course, I wondered, I wondered about this. I had yes. a storm coming directly at us, and you know, it was in tornado, and it was coming right at, at my town. And <clears> I stood <throat> out there and I held my hands. I said, "Storm pass, please, spirits, make the storm pass." And it split. It went north of me and went south of me. And I said, "Thank you, spirit." It went the other way. <laughs> <laughs> it split. Well, it you must have scared it away, Marge. <laughs> well, t- you should have just played. You should have just played a couple of my shows on very loud. That would have made it turn I, I away. I even talked to Saint Francis. <laughs> I was talking to anybody. 
I was going to say Francis. I was like, or not Francis. Who was it? Not Francis. Uh, Storm. Who's the one in Storms? The Saint. Oh, with the Saint. Uh, oh, I don't know that. Uh, Saint no. in Storms. <laughs> don't so ask the, me that one. I forgot. You, your your caller that they're Catholic. You know who I'm talking about. What? Oh, I like Francis. There is a. There, there is actually a hymn. Um, for those in peril on the sea. For yeah, those that's in that's peril on... So that, that's a, like a stormy hymn, but I don't know who the saint is for Saint of Storms. I didn't know there was yeah. such a person. Well, I know in Catholics, you talk to all the saints, right? You carry their medals. I don't know about your tradition, but, I mean, that's... <laughs> You, you, you know, I said Francis. Yeah, the, only medals, like, yeah. the only medals I've got here, Marge, were for 100 <laughs> metres swimming. <laughs> which I got while I was at school. Oh, well, I've got a couple of. Kind of, of, a couple of I, I used to play rugby at school. I got a couple of medals for rugby playing as well. Uh, they okay, never I'm came near me. Those I'm boys. They were scared. You with Roman Catholic, maybe or something, because I know they get the little squares that they carry around there. I have a friend that's a Catholic here, <clears> and he's got <throat> one of these pouches he wears around his neck, and it's a. Oh, it's a, a scapula. 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 Yeah. I was thinking novena, but that's a prayer, isn't it? Yeah. Anyway, that's, that was a neat. Deal. Anyway, I so saw. Like I said, it just flipped me out because. I stood out there. I was I wasn't doing it for myself. I didn't want my my animals. I didn't have all my animals secure. Yeah, yeah I understand. And I that, want yeah. my animals protected. But I'm thinking, well, it's split and went on both sides. But come on, protect everybody else too, not just me. <laughs> you know. And it kind of dissipated. But oh, we've had some close do calls. Take, do you take your animals down in your cellar with you? Well, I do with my dog, and and that's about it. I can't get <laughs> the chickens and the pigeons and the. Uh, cats. I got six Have cats. Have you got pigeons? <laughs> Have you got pigeons? Yeah, I got pigeons. Oh, my nephew loves pigeons. You know, Gary is the 28 year old. Yeah. He's 27, 28 year old. Well, he's the one who had the, uh, uh, the, they had the baby last year, Evie, him and his yeah. wife. And they're having another one in a few weeks called Harry. Oh, wow. And he they loves, really I don't know pigeons. what it is, he loves pigeons. He loves he pigeons, me. yes. He read that be fruitful and multiply <laughs> too many times. <laughs> Oh, they're like, they're at it like rabbits. <laughs> they're not going to. They've only been. Ma they've not even been married a year. Or just I know, over I a year now. Your old videos one on the way. Was just, he one was just one already, her. and another one on the way. <laughs> he was just dating her, and he said, "Oh well, I get me this girl. I can make me some babies." <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Couldn't wait to get on with it. Anyway, so there's <laughs> another one now called. They're going to call it Harry, and that that one's Harry. on the way as well. It reminded me when you said, uh, uh, my brother, whatever dog or cat, any animal he gets, he names it George. It's right. <laughs> just George. Everything <laughs> is George. George is my niece's baby. I know. George. That's what I laughed. Yeah. I said, there's oh, another no, George. Husband. Yeah, George. <laughs> it's a good name, but I mean, you got a cat named George, you got a dog named George. <laughs> they got a dog you know? named Monty. Monty the dog. Monty. Yeah, oh, he's, a, he's a bit of a liability, really. He's just a, he's a, he's just a little bit... Um, uh, uh, clumsy. He'll run into the house, lick you all over, and knock everything over on the way in, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, I have those cats, you know, I'm a Star Trek fan, so I've got, you know, Star Trek. Now, I used to have a Tuvok, a yeah. Spock dog, you know. Yeah. Uh, my cats are Daoshian, uh, um, Gita. Gita the cat. Gita. Gita. That's Gita. a good name. That's we had a, a, a girl. Um, I've known her for years. Sometimes she pops in on a Friday night to where I'm working. Her name's Gita. Lovely name. Her, I think her parents her, are from India, or her grandparents. Yeah, possibly. that's yeah, the yeah. Bhagavad Gita. That's their <clears throat> sacred yeah. text. And then, of course, I've got uh, um, uh, Crookethud. Crookethud was born with a crooked foot. Cro so, but <laughs> what is that, a cat? <laughs> Crookethud, yeah. Because uh, his foot got better. It, it straightened out. And then there's, there's Fuzz Bucket. He's black. Fuzz he, Bucket, he, how many Plus cats have you got? Six. Oh, oh, well, I'll have to tell Ronnie that because he's only got five, my best mate Ronnie. Oh, on your pigeon, you need, I don't ask him one of these, <laughs> when yeah. I get off here one of these days. My male pigeon, he, well, <laughs> he's in love with me. <laughs> your male pigeon? <laughs> yeah, do I need to get him a girlfriend? I mean, he thinks I'm his girlfriend. I mean, <laughs> he... Anyway, I need to talk to him about that. What I, what's you know, if that's just normal, I don't know. I hand raised him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that is normal, Marge. <laughs> don't either. <laughs> in what way? Why do you think he's in love with you? Does he just well, lie on? Does he sit he on your tried, shoulder? I don't know if I should say. <laughs> he tries to mate my hand. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> if I thought I'd carry him around, you know, and, and all of a sudden, what are you doing? <laughs> the dogs do that to me, but they're a pigeon. <laughs> oh, Marge, does he sit on your shoulder? He is in love with me. He crawls up in my uh, under my ears and in my hair and all oh, the cooing and the hugging. And <laughs> well, what do people say when they come round and all that going on? What people? I don't have people come to my house. Oh, okay. Oh, you're like me. I don't like people coming around here, Mark. It's not that I don't. I mean, I don't have people. This is all no, I got. I this like, is internet. I mean, yeah. I don't have c- company and nobody. Yep, I don't like people coming around here much. <clears throat> I don't know if you heard the story recently. They come to see me. Well, they, 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 I think keep... it's because I have do not. Uh, I, have, I have a sign that says, uh, keep, uh, beware of dog and no trespassing. Maybe that's why they don't come up here. That might be why. <laughs> yeah. but, there's, but they've been trying yeah. to come around and change my, um, uh, they keep going on. They say someone keeps ringing up and I ignore the phone call to change yeah. my electricity meter. Right. Oh, there's you, you got to fix that, dear. Oh, no, you no, there's, that, there's nothing wrong with it. it no, 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 they have to update that. It no, gets, I don't uh, want a new meter. Because, I don't want people coming around here Oh, well, I know, I invite but that's, them. I read up on that, and see, they changed it because of their policy of the of it being out of date. Uh, they they own that meter. That You don't own the meter here. here. I mean, here, they say they own the meter, and they have to keep it because of their uh, insurance. It's out of date. It has to be updated. Something to do with how I, I read up on it anyway. I don't know if it works the same there, but that meter is owned by the company. Is it that? Is that how it works there? I don't know. They're going to have to come around and knock on the door. I'm not answering They're the phone. They're going to have to come personally. I, yeah, actually, they need. I don't know if you were watching my um, Facebook things last week, um, uh-huh. <clears throat> but I've actually stopped answering the phone now to numbers oh, yeah. that i don't know i'm so fed up with people ringing up and trying to sell things or doing surveys or anything like that oh, and i God. am indeed registered with this thing called the telephone preference service mm-hmm. <coughs> which has made it definitely made a difference once i registered with them but this, the, the calls still come so i no longer answer the phone and i'm kind Is of wondering here <clears throat> I think, I think these customer, these these companies and surveyors and what have you, they've done themselves in here because I can't be the only one that doesn't answer the phone anymore. Well, they, they buy might... those disposable phones, you know, they're not, you can't even call back. You I... can't call back because they'll say it's unavailable, you know. Yes, but yes, yes. That's here, right. That's if right. they yeah. do it, you yeah. take that number and you register, they'll get a fine. I think it's $5,000, something like that, 5000 They have a similar thing here, thing. yes, yeah, yeah. But that's yeah. a lot of work, you know, if there's different people calling you, yeah. I mean, but yeah. nobody calls me. That's why I said, well, don't call me. I'm, I'm, I'm lonely. I need somebody to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> and no one calls you? Oh, it's the way, it's the way it is, isn't it? That's the way it is. What time is it there in Oklahoma, Marge? It must be coming up to uh, 5 o'clock. Yeah, I need to go back to bed because i got to go work today. Are you not uh, staying to listen o'clock. to the rest of us? Cool, dear. Huh? There might be some other people calling in today, you never I know. I thought I said don't want to talk to me for an hour, so... Um, I'll watch it on the recording <coughs> later. All right. Nice but to talk I, to you, Marge. I, go back to me. <laughs> I for, okay, have a good day. I hope you don't get any more tornadoes come towards you. No. Well, may all tornadoes pass. I'll go out and hold my hands up and ask the spirits. <laughs> all right. Cheerio, you, Marge. <laughs> get a new day. Bye-bye. Goodbye to Oklahoma. Thank you, Marge. There we are, Marge in uh, Oklahoma, chatting away. Oh, we do like a chat with like, Marge in Oklahoma. She's got all these lovely animals, raccoons and... and um, Dogs and cats, pigeons, we find out, chickens. It's all there in Marge. Marge in Oklahoma. Uh, good morning to young Sean, who says, "Does you, I didn't know YouTube does live streaming. Um, it does. It does. But you, I, have, I couldn't find a live streaming button on YouTube anyway. Um, <clears throat> but they do it on Google. Oh, what's that called? Google Plus? Google Plus, you get this thing, start a hangout. So you start a hangout, and a little box comes up. Uh, if you tick the box, it then goes on your YouTube channel as well, right? So so that is indeed uh, how it works. By the way, this is the first time we are st- streaming live on uh, YouTube. Also, there might be some people joining us via Ustream as well, because there's a little ad there going out. It's a clock to strike and 11 o'clock there. Um, if you are indeed watching via YouTube, uh, you stream and you want to try the YouTube thing, then you can do so. If you go to my main 
um, United, uh, uh, my main Facebook page, uh, and my Facebook is facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. All right, facebook.com forward slash Chris Reardon UK. That's my Facebook. Right at the very top there on my wall, <coughs> you'll see the link to join us on the um, uh, live show. Oh, I say it's at the top. Someone else has put something at the top there now. OK, just the one below that, it will say, good morning, join me for this morning's live talk show now here, and uh, you'll find the YouTube link there, OK? That is, of course, if you're watching this live on Friday. If you're watching a recording of the show, obviously, you can't watch it live now then. All right? Now, you can, um, let's see if we've got any messages. I think we've got a few messages coming in. Fag Ashley says there was a little bit of a problem with the... Um, uh, the uh, uh, sound when Marge came on there but we've adjusted that so I think Marge was coming over much louder than everything else so I managed to sort that there alright Thank you, uh, Fagash Leal. You can join in, boys and girls, if you want to. Uh, my Skype username is all one word, Chris Reardon. OK? Chris Reardon is the Skype username, C-H-R-I-S-R-E-A-R-D-O-N. And there's a phone-in number as well, 20 6358 That's a local London number, not a premium rate number. We're not having any of that charging 45 pence a minute or anything. It's just a normal local number, OK? 020 And if, <coughs> like then, because there was a couple of people calling in then, if, like then, I'm on the phone or talking to someone or Skyping with someone, I can't take your call. It's, it's not like there's loads of operators in the room next to me. It's like, oh, could you hold on? There's only me. There's me sitting here with a load of buttons and things like that, OK? Now, uh, where were we? <clears throat> oh, the uh, the Margaret Thatcher funeral. Anyone watch that? I I I was looking. I I didn't actually watch it live. I recorded it, and I'm sort of a, a little bit of the way through it at the moment. Um, I was looking for a particular hymn. Actually, I vow to thee, my country. Now, the 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 newspapers say that was going to be there, but I've kind of flicked all the way through it. A couple of times now, and I can't find it. Did anyone watch Margaret Thatcher's funeral? Um, and and when, don't want to get into politics here, whether you thought she was great or not. I'm just asking, did you watch Margaret Thatcher's funeral? And if so, was the hymn, I vow to thee my country in it? The one, I vow to thee my country. I'm going to sing in a minute, don't worry. I'm going to sing in a minute. I vow to thee my country. Was that actually in... The service anywhere. Because as I say, I've gone forward right the way through it and I can't find it. I thought it was after the uh, the young girl did that reading, Margaret Thatcher's, um, not niece, granddaughter, wasn't it? I thought it was after that, but it's not. Do you know the hymn? It was also in Princess Diana's wedding and Princess Diana's funeral. I vow to thee, my country. If you watched Margaret Thatcher's funeral, did you see that? Please let me know. Now, as I say, lots of ways of contacting the show. If you're watching the recording, or indeed live, you can email the show. My email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. You might not want to uh, use a Skype message in or a, a Skype phone call in or whatever. Uh, you can always email the show, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, there's also a Skype. Skype is Skype in. Skype username, Chris Reardon, or one word, or the phone in, 020-8133-6358. I think I've learned it off by heart now. Eight one double three six three five eight. So, uh, watching Margaret Thatcher's funeral, um, very, very, very moving indeed. And I have to say, if you don't mind me saying so, wherever you are in the world, we did a bloody good job of that. <coughs> the British do very, very good um, ceremonial type things. You had all the the army there and uh, the Chelsea pensioners. Did you see them in their red tunics and uh, uh, lovely uniforms there? Uh, but the boys. The, was there? I think there was eight of them, either six or eight boys, or boys and men. Some of them were men, men some of them were boys, uh, carrying the coffin. And I thought, what a privilege that would be to carry Margaret Thatcher's coffin. And it got me, got me to thinking of my own mother's and mother and father's uh, funeral. Now that I think about it, and of course it's always a hindsight thing, uh, my dad died in 1996 and my mum in 2000. And 
I kind of got thinking, you know, that would have been a nice thing if I could have carried, or, or at least helped to carry, mum and dad's coffin, you know. Have you done that? Have you carried your parents' coffin? Or perhaps, well, well, I don't, and I'm not tempting fate here, perhaps you'd like to in some point in the future, do you see what I mean? Do you, do you think that's a nice thing to do? I do. I mean, maybe these funeral, um, what do you call them? Funeral people? Funeral, oh, uh, funeral directors. Maybe funeral directors should try offering that to people. You know? Because I don't think it's offered. So you go in and say, oh, someone's died. Okay, da 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 da, -da okay. Would you like to assist Carrie in the coffin? I mean, it would be difficult. I mean, people would be crying and everything. Maybe that's not the done thing. I don't know. But I just think that would be a nice thing to do, certainly with your own parents. Uh, but to actually carry someone's coffin like, like Margaret Thatcher, I would have been very proud to do that. What, what, a, what, a, what a thing. What a, what a thing to actually do that. Anyway, they did look like they were having a bit of a bad time because the steps, it was in St. Paul's Cathedral. And I think these steps are quite steep. I have been in there many, many years ago. Um, it's a beautiful place to visit. If you ever come to London as a tourist, one of the things you must do is go and visit St. Paul's Cathedral and the various other places. But, it, I mean, it really is very beautiful there. And you can go up these stairs and go in the Whispering Gallery. And I think... I do believe you can go. I'm not 100% not sure of this. Perhaps if anyone knows, you can, you can let me know. I do believe you can go right to the top of the, um, uh, of the, uh, uh, of the, of the cathedral and you could look out. I'm not 100% sure because there's a little like a, a nipple on the top, shall we call it? A little nipple on the top. And I think you can go up there and completely look, um, Look out there, all right? So do go and see that. <clears throat> but uh, I did watch... Um, I've seen part of uh, the the ceremony so far. And it's very, very moving indeed. Even George Osborne, the Chancellor that we have at the moment here, who, you know, let's be honest, has upset a lot of people with his cutbacks here, there and the other. Some people are for him, some people are against. Don't want to get into the politics, but even he was crying there. And I, I looked at his face, I thought, oh my God, he's crying. And that's a side that we've never seen of him. You know? I think sometimes we think that, um, that politicians are are hard and, and have no feelings. Can you just hold on? I've just realised I've got a light on there. I haven't turned my other light on. There we are, that's better. I, I hadn't turned a light on then. Marge was complaining it's a bit dark in the studio. Yes, it's a very... It's dark in here today, Marge. I'm feeling in a dark mood. All this talk of funerals and what have you. Um, yes, I, th I think that's a side that we often don't, don't see of politicians. And maybe sometimes we think that they aren't human. You know, they don't always make decisions that we want them to make. But I think generally, politicians make decisions that are, that they think are best for the country. Not necessarily best for you or me, but best for the country. What do you think? Let us know on the email, OK? Chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Chris at uh, unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Got to say hello to Kalinda or Kalida. Is it Kalida? I think it's Kalida. What a lovely name. Now, where are you? United Kingdom. Oh, you're in London. OK. And uh, Kalida writes this morning. Hello, Chris. This is... Kalida. I hope I've I hope I've said your name right. Hello, Kalida. I've been listening to your show for more than one year now. Just wanted to say I love your show and I really enjoy when you talk about your cat, Katie. I also have a cat and she's called Marilyn. Oh, you must send a picture of your cat. I want to see your cat. Send it over. A little more about me. I used to live in London, but before, uh, sorry, I used to live in London before, but now I have moved to Japan. 
I always listen to your show every week when I'm travelling to work. Keep up the good work. Please take care of your Katie. So thank you very much for that. I don't know if you're actually with us live or you watch the um, uh, recording there. But, uh, yeah, thank you very much for that. It's nice, nice to hear. How, where are you in Japan? Do let us know. It's a, it's a big country, you know. I, I hope you're nowhere near the old uh, uh, radioactive stuff. Well, that frightens me, that nuclear business. It really does. We have the... Uh, I, I, I said that about the politicians a little while ago, saying that they think things are best for the country often. Uh, one of the things we've got here at the moment, uh, Kalia, is um, uh, uh, they've said yes to building a new nuclear power station and they just frighten the life out of me nuclear power stations and they always say oh they're perfectly safe um nothing can go wrong and they like they lie how do they know nothing can go wrong i could sit here talking to you now and i promise you in the next 30 seconds nothing could go wrong and i could suddenly have a heart attack and die on this show I mean, I hope I'd get some sort of warning. You know, at least I could advertise it. We might get one or two more viewers or listeners. Might I? But, you know, that could happen. You don't know. So it does annoy me when they say, oh, nuclear power is um, perfectly safe. I don't think it. I don't like nuclear power at all. I think more money, and if it, if it is more expensive, so be it. More money should be invested in renewable energies, wind power. And we get all these arseholes on there saying, oh, they, wind power's no good. It doesn't produce that much electricity. Well, no, not all the time. It produces the electricity when the wind's blowing, you idiots. It does. It does work. I, I had solar panels put on this roof um, about five years ago now. And I always remember one of my neighbours four doors down. Nice man, nice, lovely man. And he says, um, oh, what are you having done? Old bloke he is, older than me. So he's really old. Um, and he said, what are you having done? I said, well, I'm having solar panels put, uh, put on the roof. And he says, oh, they don't work. And walked off. <laughs> you know, I mean, what hope have you got? Anyway. Um, a few months later, his wife, I was saying to his wife about my panels, she says, oh, are you getting on with those panels? I said, all right. I said, I've got my electric bill right down. She says, um, do you mind me asking, what is your electricity bill now? And I said, about £10 a month. I said, do you mind me asking what yours is? She said, 75 to 80 No, of course they don't work. Ah, <laughs> uh, suckers! Suckers! Of course they work. But those, those nuclear things, they, they absolutely frighten the life out of me. They really do. Uh, Marge says, I'm not complaining about your light. I just thought you forgot to turn it on. No, it's, it's on now, Marge. I'm very, very pleased to say it's on now. Oh, by the way, do you know it's someone's birthday today? Oh, yes, it is. It's Wendy's birthday this morning, boys and girls. Wendy's birthday. Now, Wendy is, like me, a huge Barry Manilow fan. Yeah, I would not, Wendy, I would not ask your age, my darling. I just want to wish you a happy birthday. Are you ready? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Wendy. Happy birthday to you. There we are, Wendy. A big happy birthday to my mate Wendy. Also a Barry Manilow Fanilow fan. All the best people are Barry Manilow fans. Happy birthday, Wendy. All right. Eh? Hey, are you going to call in today, Wendy? What gifts have you got? So, see, that's the trouble. As you get older, all the sort of gifts dry up don't they do you know what i mean you know those wonderful um presents you used to get as a child birthday presents christmas it all dries up there's nothing nothing well i lie um I, i've been a bit unfortunate with my birthday presents this year first of all my lovely sister who i love very very much i asked her for a footstool could you get me a footstool for christmas uh, for my birthday, because the one I've got, all the all the um, 
the um what's that stuff around the outside it's all peeling away it's like that fake le- plastic some sort of plastic you know like fake leather stuff and um it, it, it's it's peeling off so she sent one bless her heart and it was it was um it was swayed and I took one look at it and I thought, I can't have that in the house because I'm a bit of a vegetarian. I, 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 I don't eat meat and certainly um, I, I don't buy any. I've, I've got leather things in the house, but I don't buy any more. Any, you know, when these wear out, they will be replaced with plastic items. I don't believe in using animals um, uh, to, to, to make things like that. I, I just think it's wrong killing an animal for its skin and all that business or or eat it or even eating them i don't i can't can't be eating dead animals anymore it's just just nasty and cruel um and my dear sister sent me this 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 little footstool and it was covered in in, in and, she, and then and i said i'd shout i'm really sorry i can't have this in the house and she says why not i said it's, it's pig skin shout. And so, uh, so i took it back up there and i think my niece had it in the end and then uh, she, so she bought me this other top which i don't have with me it's like a red and gray top thing and um my best mate bought me two lovely lambs wool jumpers now, I, I don't mind wearing those because the, the, the lambs don't get hurt, do they? You know, you just shave them off and it grows back again, a bit like a haircut. But I put them on and I, w- I, w- I was always aware of being a little bit itchy when these run. I thought, oh, I'll put up with it, you know, it has stop. Anyway, then my, my arms started coming up in a bit of a rash, so I had to stop wearing them. So I washed one of them to see if that would help. Well... I mean, <laughs> I've took this thing out of the washing machine and I had it on a, on a warm wash, warm wooden wash. It come out all, all shrunk. So I put it back on again. It was all tight around my stomach and everything. So I gave that back to him along with the one I hadn't washed. I said, look, I just can't wear these. So I think he's going to get me something else. Oh, well, I bloody well hope he is. Anyway, I got him a nice present for his birthday because he's 40 this year, my best mate, Ron. So we're going to go to Rome in Italy and look at the architecture and go around the Vatican and all that business. This is what we're doing for his birthday. I hope I get another present. That's the point. I, he said he was going to get me another present and it hasn't arrived yet. I wonder what it's going to be. How exciting is that? I must remind him. I don't, don't want him to forget, you know. <laughs> you don't, do I? I think he's on a little bit of a cutback with his money at the moment. That's the only thing, you know, he's starting to to, to rein in. Because he's not like me. I'm very careful with money. He's not like me. He He's a little bit free spending, he is. Yes. What do you like with your money? Do you spend it or do you save it? You've got to save something. I keep trying to train my nephew, Jimmy, who's 16 now, to save his money. Oh, he, he does, actually. When he wants something, he will save his money. But he's got a bike now. Got a little moped, you know, one of those 50cc jobs, because uh, he passed his CBRT, well, I don't know what it's called, some some motorbike test recently, which he parks. I'm very proud of him. And he's also now got into the college that he wanted to get into go. He's gone into college and he's learning car bodywork, which is a good thing, really, uh, because I damaged the mirror, the back, the, the back part of the mirror on my car. Oh, a couple of months ago now. It's all scratched up at the back. Anyway, uh, so I took it into the um, uh, uh, Toyota to get fixed. And I, I thought it was going to cost me about 35, 40 pounds now. And they said 75 pounds. I said, for a bit of plastic. I said, you're having a laugh. And, you know, I said, no, nah, just leave it. And they said, Look, well, you're not going to have it done. I said, no, I'm not. I'm having a few scratches on a mirror. Does the car go any slower? No. Yeah, but it looks... I don't care what it bloody well looks like. It's a car. Gets you from A to B. A few scratches here and there. Doesn't bother me. Thank you very much. I'll have it back. So I didn't get it done. So I will be asking him to see if he can fix that mirror for me. Probably need ordinary, ordinary. And it will probably cost me more, you see. Because I don't mind giving my nephew money. Any of them. Don't bother me at all. They get sorted out at Christmas and birthdays. Don't you worry about that And when I go up there. Right? But... I don't mind giving him sort of, you know, a, a load of money to do that. And I'll pro- the funny thing is I'll probably end up giving him much more than it would have cost at the garage. But that's OK because I would give him money anyway. So I might as well be getting something for it now, mightn't I? Do you see, do you see the thinking there? Yes, very good. Very good indeed. Don't forget you can join in. Uh, email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk you can skype in my skype in name is chris reardon all one word chris reardon and the phone number 020 
01336358. Did we have a did we have a call coming in there? I think it might have been let's try this. Might have missed the call there. Um let's try this. Oh, hang on a minute. What have I done here? Uh, I think I might have missed something here. I've done something wrong here now. What is it? 10.38. Now, that says call phone. Strange. Nope, can't do that. Could someone... Uh, might have done something wrong there. don't know. Let's have a look there. The only thing with this Skype thing is it often shows up messages that have already gone. Do you know what I mean? And I get, I get very, conf very confused. Very confused indeed. Right, we've got an email here. Uh, come in from Mr. Adams. Good morning, Craig. Who says, good morning to you, Chris. A lovely day here in Hinkley, Leicestershire. It's nice here, actually. The sun is... Well, it's a little bit overcast at the moment. I noticed the sun was out earlier. I was looking at the weather forecast for this area, Craig, uh, next week. And next Saturday... It's not tomorrow. Next Saturday, it's going to be 80 degrees. At last, summer has arrived! Shake up your weekday shoes. It's time to get your sneakers on. The summer has arrived at last. And it's coming... To a town near you next week. 80 degrees next Saturday. Craig says, I'm tuning into your YouTube live. Picture and sound is fine. I've got quite a few celebrities tuning into my time and space Castlemead Hospital radio show later on this afternoon at 3.30. Some of the celebrities are Simon Gregson. Who's he then? Steve McDonald from Coronation Street. Oh, I don't watch it. Sean Lloyd. ITV weather lady. I kind of remember her. Mark Benton, TV bank manager from the advert. Daniel Chalk from Waterloo Road. Oh, that's rubbish, that is now. Is he the big guy, Daniel Chalk? I think he is, isn't he? That's a load of rubbish. Why on earth did they ever move it to Scotland? It's just stupid. It's just stupid, that whole thing. It really is. Um, Lisa Riley from Waterloo Road. You've been framed when she married Paddy Aridney and Madara. They all ask for music requests. You can tune in to Castle Mead Radio. We're online 24 hours a day. Castlemeadradio.co.uk If you're interested, Chris, there's a Doctor Who music promotion concert coming to the Royal Albert Hall in London on July the 13th and 14th. Music will be by the BBC National Orchestra of Wales and conducted by Ben Foster. Tickets are quite cheap to celebrate the 50th anniversary. Great show as usual. Thank you very much, uh, Craig Adams. And thank you for writing in there. I know you're a big Doctor Who, Who fan. The 50th Doctor Who anniversary we've got coming up soon. And there's only going to be two Doctors in it, from what I can see. The one now, Matt Baker, and David Tennant. What the hell's all that about? I mean, surely you'd get all the Doctors on there, or at least all the ones that are alive, as many as possible, and he hasn't done that. Why haven't we got the old Doctors on there? Stephen Moffat is the writer, isn't he? And I've got to say, since he took over the writing, I have lost interest in Doctor Who, and his, his, this is his second series, I think. I find the storylines complicated sometimes and difficult to follow. Addy, what do you think, Craig? Do, do, you, do you like his writing, or, or do you find it a little bit too much as well? I, I just I just have great difficulty following what the hell's going on. It's also become sexy. Kissing and things like that. I mean, in Doctor Who, I just don't get it. Don't get it at all, and it just doesn't fit in. I, am, I just don't think he's he's up to the job, really. I don't think he, he's the wrong person. He's, he's probably a very good writer. I just don't think he's a good writer for Doctor Who. 
And if I miss a Doctor Who now, if I forget to set the recorder, because I never watch anything live anymore anymore, if I forget to set the recorder, it doesn't bother me that I've missed it. Do you know what I mean? Your thoughts on that, please? On the email, do you watch Doctor Who or did you used to? What do you think of the guy who writes it now? Do let us know. Email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Uh, Fag Ashley was Skyped in, who says, have you seen the size of the seagulls up close? They're bloody enormous. Yes, I have. Thank you very much. I used to work at a little pub near you, uh, Fag Ashley, or the Bulldog. Tiny little place it was. Um... And I used to come out there at like five o'clock in the morning. And these seagulls would land on the road because there's no cars at five o'clock in the morning. I used to do this job two a.m. to five a.m. Oh, it was a killer. Let me tell you, that was a killer. That one. And then I'd drive, I used to drive an hour and a half home after that. Um, but yes, the seagulls would land on on the road, or indeed on your car. The seagulls are massive things. Oh, they're scary. I wouldn't like to be attacked by a load of seagulls. What's the correct term for a load of seagulls? Anyone know? Let us know on the email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Um, and she says, got the back door open now, so I have myself and three cats on guard duty as one of them keeps trying to get in the kitchen. Oh, I have that with magpies. I have that here with magpies, Lil. Sometimes I'll, 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 I might be, because the kitchen's a large, larger size, the kitchen, and um, I might be having something to do on the table, and I hear a noise behind me, and I walk around the other side of the kitchen, and there's a magpie come into the kitchen, and it's helping itself to the bloody cat food. Greedy bastards. <laughs> I do feed birds. I chuck bread and things. And squir I've started feeding squirrels as now, which may, may shock some of you if you knew the squirrel story from two years ago. Well, I think it was two years ago now. Oh, we had squirrels in the loft. Or the at oh, Yeah, it's not an attic, it's a loft. That was a nightmare. That was a really, really nightmare. Oh, it's a flock of seagulls. Thank you, Fag Ashlil. It's actually a flock of seagulls that we're looking for the word there. A flock of seagulls. It's always worth knowing who's around. You see, people people help you out with uh, with uh, the information. Marge says, happy birthday, Wendy. You should have sung as well, Wendy. Should have said, well, hello, Wendy. And Kalidia. Kalida is uh, watching the show right now in Japan, so you're welcome along. What's the weather like in Japan this morning, Kalidia? Have you got Skype? Maybe you could call in. I don't know. Did you try and call in earlier? I, I have a feeling you might have tried to call in earlier, because I have someone here that says it's a missed call from, um, from Japan, and I wondered if it was you. don't know if you want to try calling in again. My sort of... Um, it's got video call, but it can't be a video call because that might take up too much bandwidth, I'm afraid. Yosan. That, that could be you, couldn't it? Yosan. Uh, yes, uh, Ma, uh, uh, Fagash Lil says, yeah, we got seagulls and magpies trying to get the cat food. Here. Yeah, they nicked the blooming cat food. Greedy, greedy. Now, I was just telling you... Um, just before, actually, while Marge came on there, about One Direction. Now, if I could just find this story here again, because, let me see, it's here somewhere. There it is. One Direction is a pop group, just in case you're somewhere else in the world and you haven't heard from them. They are pretty global. Four young girly lads prancing around on the stage. I don't know if they sing live or not. They're certainly very popular. They are huge. They are huge at the moment. One Direction are huge, right? And they've just had their waxworks done. Saw this story yesterday. And it says, uh, uh, this was in the... It's actually on the website called Digital Spy. And it said, One Direction saw double today as they came face to face with Madame Two Swords wax figures. Harry, Zane, Niall, Louis and Liam posted next to their lifeless counterparts ahead of the official unveiling of the sculptors at the London attraction. I don't know if I've got a little picture. I might be able to show you this picture. I don't know. Let's try. Shall we try? We don't get anywhere by not trying, do you? One second. Um, if I can just... How will I do this then? 
custom overlay. Let's try custom. Oh yeah, that's going to work. Let's try this. Can you see that? Right. Pictures of uh, One Direction. Hang on a minute. Let me write something down. I'm going to change that for the recording. One Direction picture at one hour. Direction. Pick one hour. Oh, Here we are. So they've gone to Madame Two Swords. And you've got uh, uh, all the boys there. And wait, let me go back to this story then. Where's that gone now? Now I've lost my story now. Oh, there it is. There it is. Uh, the boys were stunned by the incredible likeness of the figures. It is, it is very good. Those wax works are very clever. And you can also see all sorts in there. I remember seeing Margaret Thatcher in there, some of the American presidents and uh, uh, stuff like that. Apparently, when, un when finally unveiled to the public, the One Direction figures were immediately set upon by a group of their devout fans who planted kisses on the cheeks of their idols. Oh, no. It must be like kissing a bloody candle. <laughs> Well, of course, I have the same thing. I have the same thing here, to be honest. You know, I try and go out, go to go to, go down to Waitrose, where my supermarket that I use now. Um, and, you know, you, you go in and I'm trying to quietly scan my items and people start coming up and, t you know, you can feel them brushing against you. They obviously recognise me from doing this this show. They don't. They don't actually. They, they can't pluck up the courage to talk to me. But I, I you know, they, 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 you can feel them brush against you as they go, and they go and go over to their friends. Oh, I just brushed Chris Reardon just over there. It happens all the time. You know, it's just the life of a celebrity. You get used to that sort of thing. You know, it's it's all right. I don't mind it. I quite happily have a couple of them around for a cup of tea or that. But anyway. Um, I mentioned that story because I've got to be honest, I've been to um, Madame Two Swords a couple of years ago. My sister came down uh, with her lovely children before they indeed had their own children. And uh, we went for uh, an afternoon out in London. And uh, don't think, if you go to Madame Two Swords, let me tell you, you will queue for a long time. You will be charged a lot of money to go in there. And I've got to be honest, I thought it was boring. I got bored in there. Just looking around at these figures that don't, they don't do anything. They don't move around or anything like that. The most exciting part of the afternoon was when uh, my nephew, or was it my niece? Doesn't matter. So one of them put their hands in this molten wax. They pulled their hands out and they got a cast of their hand, which, which they paid for through the nose. <laughs> You know, so they've got a cast of their hand. I'm not quite sure what you would do with something like that. I mean, it's just a bit weird, really. Would you display it somewhere or what? So I have actually been to Madame Two Swords, and I got a bit bored. I thought it was boring. I you know, couldn't wait to get out, to be honest. It's a big place, lovely building. But, I, I mean, that is all it is. You walk around, and there are figures, very good figures, very well-made figures. There are figures in there, and uh, uh, that's how it works. Have you been there? Have you been to any of the um, attractions wherever, wherever you are or wherever you've been in the world? And did you find them boring? Did you go somewhere because people kept talking about it? And you went, oh, is that it? You know, do you know what I mean? Do let us know on the email, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. Or you can Skype in, Skype username, all one word, Chris Reardon. Okay. All one word, Chris Reardon is a Skype username. Or the phone in number 020 6358 That's, of course, if you're watching live on Friday, you can join in on the phone. 020 6358 Or the Skype, Skype username, all one word, is Chris Reardon. Uh, Kalida writes, I used to work at Madame Two Swords in London before. Wow. Did you really? What's it like to work there? I bet that's hard work. Is it hard work watching there? Kaleza also says, let's talk about cats. Well, I mean, we do talk about cats a lot because we love cats. My mate's got five cats and he, he names them all. Uh, well, he's, he had three and then took two in, which were older cats, like because a friend of his, uh, two friends of his died and they both owned these cats. And um, he took them in and he's got uh, Ralph. Louis, Viton, Maddie, and Lauren. 
Lauren and Viton keep fighting at the moment, and he's not quite sure why that is. He just, he just jumps on her all the time. But they are, they are amazing animals, aren't they, cats? We like cats. Sean says, I've been to Madame Two Swords and the London Dungeons. Sean, what did you think of Madame Two Swords? Did you like it? I also, I didn't go to the London Dungeons. There was this place opposite it called the London... What was it called now? The London Bridge Experience. It was bloody awful. It was awful. I did feel I'd been ripped off for that one. It was just a load of old crap. It really was. But if you went to the London Dungeons, that was the proper one. I think they've moved recently as well, haven't they? They have recently moved. Right, let me just check my message things here. See how we're doing there. That's it, lovely. Oh, Simon. Good morning, Simon. Who says, hi, Chris. Cannot join you to talk this morning as the other half of me is... As the other half has me decorating the kitchen while I'm off work. Well, I should think so too. Simon, you can't just sit there lazing the day away, dear, doing nothing. Bad time you got off your lazy fat ass and done something, isn't it? Eh? Just sitting there watching computers and idiots like me chat. It really is. <laughs> Simon does his own show on VectisRadio.co.uk uh, on the Friday rock show tonight between 7 and uh, 11 o'clock. I would, I would join you, but I'm at work at that time, unfortunately, DJing to a load of um, ungrateful little people. Really. Um, Kalida says... Um, while she was working at Madame Two Swords, it was a lot of fun me meeting lots of people from other countries. Well, of course, they all go there then, don't they? Yeah. I, I think, I can't remember, but I think I went many, many years ago to Madame Two Swords in New York. And at the time, there was a picture of, or there was a model right outside of, um, of George W. Bush. I kind of took a pose with him, you know, that looked like I was actually talking to him. Yes. Uh, Sean says, I stood next to the Queen and sat next to Barack Obama. What, in, 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 the, in, the, uh, in Madame Two Swords? Did you? Because there is a bit, there's one of the Queen. Is that the one where you have to pay? I think there's, there are a couple of waxworks in there where you actually have to pay to have your photo taken with them, don't you? I can't remember if that's right or not. Anyway, um, anyone else who wants to call in now, be nice and quick, all right, because we're going to uh, wrap up very soon. If you want to call in there, then uh, do so quickly, all right? Otherwise, you'll run out of time. You'll have to wait till next week if you want to chat. I must tell you, yesterday, I'm very pleased with myself. I managed to save quite a lot of money simply by picking up the phone. Virgin Media. I have Virgin Media for my broadband and telephone, right? I find the service excellent. I have a 120 meg download and 10 meg upload, which is the reason that this whole video thing has started working properly now. Indeed, uh, we have actually got two streams going out today, one on YouTube without the adverts and one on Ustream with the adverts. And it does seem to have worked OK. No one has, has um, emailed in and said uh, anything like... Um, you know, it's buffering or anything like that. It all seems to have worked quite well today. If it hasn't, please let me know and then I can look at it for next time. All right? Um, so I've been very pleased. The only thing is the price. They recently put it up only a little bit. But nevertheless, it was working out to about £49 a month. Now, remember, I don't have any subscription television. I don't believe in paying for subscription television. I have no Sky... No Virgin Media pay channels. I, ju I have a, a free sat thing, a free satellite, and I have free view. That's enough television for me. Thank you very much. OK, and I have the computer as well, of course. So I don't have any subscription television or anything like that. All I have is the broadband and the telephone. Now, I rarely use my home phone now. Simply because I don't have any calls included with that package, right? So if I if I use the home phone, if I pick up if I pick up the phone, if I pick up the phone and make a call, right? I will have to pay for it. Okay. 
With my mobile phone, which is uh, orange, or, or E, what is it called now? E-E, I think. E-E-E. With that, I... I, um... I have a lot of free calls, something like 2,000 minutes a month. So I use that to make all my calls. So I never really use the home phone downstairs. So I rung them yesterday. Virgin Media, this is. I uh, spoke to her, and they were always very, very pleasant on the phone. I think she was in Bangladesh or somewhere like that, this, this, this woman on the phone. Always very, very, very pleasant on the phone, these people. Right? And I said, um, can you tell me how much it would be without the phone? And I think it was £39 a month. I said, oh, you might as well come and take it out then. Oh, OK. Can I ask why? I said, yeah, a couple of reasons. Uh, number one, you put the price up last year. I says, um, and number uh, so I'm going to cut it back elsewhere. And number two, I, I rarely use it. OK, do you mind if I put you through to someone else? So I said, no, that's fine. I thought, OK, they're going to get me to try and stay now. Anyway, so another woman come on the phone. Very helpful. She was in England. And she said, I gather you want to get rid of the phone. Uh, I said, um, can I, may I ask you why? So I told her exactly the same thing. OK, how would you feel, sir, if I can reduce the price that you're paying, but you could still keep the phone? And I thought, ah, now you're talking my language, lady. OK, yeah, see what you come up with, I thought. You know, what have I got to lose? Anyway, so it turns out, from £49 a month, she's managed to reduce it to 36 or 34 or 36, I can't remember the exact amount. And I said, well, that's fine then. I says, and, and, and everything's the same. She said, everything will have exactly the same as you are now, except you'll be paying less. So that's it. Simply by picking the phone up, I've saved over £100 a year. For nothing. For just asking. You could look at it another way. Why don't they just do it anyway? You know, that, that came to my mind as well. Why not just do it? Instead of having to ring up and ask, can you save me money? Just, just, just do it, please, and let me save you money. But no, you have to ring up. So that was interesting. I didn't know really that was possible even. So that's that. And then, so I was sitting there quite pleased with myself, and I started going through one of my, um, uh, accounts my um oh, what do you call it now my my statements and i noticed my t-mobile dongle thing it's like a little thing you plug it in the side of your laptop so if you haven't got wi-fi then you can use uh, the cellular cell cellular network right and i noticed it's gone up five pounds so last month it was like 14 quid Fourteen pounds something, and now it's nineteen pounds something. Um, so I rang them up. Now that took some doing. Bloody phone numbers all over the place for them. Contact this and contact that. And press one and order. Anyway, I got through to someone in the end, and she said, "I, I told her the problem. I was going, okay, let me have a look." Again, nice, helpful lady. And she said, what's happened is that you've come to the end of your special promotional period. She said, um, without me even saying anything here, she then said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll, I'll refund you the £6 that you've paid extra this month and put the offer back on so you'll get that now to the end of your contract. Six months off. Hello! Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So I saved another 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 50, 60, 70 pound a month just by ringing up and asking. Unbelievable, isn't it? So it might be worth you trying that, boys and girls. If you want to save a bit of money, simply make a phone call. It might work for me. Why won't it for you? You never know until you try. Thank you. Uh, Marge says, some of the calls you are not answering, you may be missing some more pounds. Do you think so? <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about that, Marge. And remember, it's me that called them, not the other way around. And uh, she's... Uh... 
Prushka. Hello, Prushka. Who's Prushka? You've just joined us now, haven't you? Prushka. I love cats, but love Chris Moore. Lots of respect from Japan. Prushka, was it you who tried to ring me on the Skype earlier? I tell you what, I'll, I'll keep it on for a little bit longer, in just in case you want to ring. Let me see. I've got a recent thing here. I don't know. I just can't get on with this Skype at all. It's nearly, it's nearly as bad as Twitter. We don't really like Twitter. No, it's not there, is it? I don't think it's there. No. We, we don't really like Twitter. No. <laughs> I've been trying it for so long now, Twitter, and I just can't get on with it either. Um, Fagash Lil's got to go. She's got to call Virgin because he's on the same No 2 package. Oh, she's got to call Virgin now as well, have you? Yeah, you go and have a go, my darling. And uh, good morning, Richard. Morning, Richard. This is Richard, who I work with, I do believe, occasionally. Nice boy. Turn me down, but then everyone else does, don't they? You know, never mind, Richard. Richard says, I've already tried calling in with Talk Mobile. They didn't reduce it, but they gave me a free tablet computer. Are you having a lot? Not an iPad. Probably not an iPad. Well, that's not bad. You see, just by making a phone call. So if you think you're being over, well, I'm overcharged all the time, boys and girls. Everything I buy, I feel ripped off. Don't you feel the same? Do you? I hate buying, I hate spending money, I hate it. I feel ripped off all the time. Electricity, gas, telephone. It's got to be worth a try. He's got a free tablet computer. A free tablet computer. Just by picking up the phone and complaining about his, uh, about his bill. Of course, it's got to be said, if too many people start doing it, then they, surely they're not going to reduce everyone's money, are they? Huh? Or is it worth a go? Go on, have a go. You think you've been charged too much? Give them a ring and see what happens. All right. Uh, I think we'll wrap it up there today, boys and girls. Oh, hang on a minute. Jerry, Jerry Green. Hello, Jerry. Who wants to know, my daughter Danielle would like to know how your cat is. Is she now eating properly again? Yes, she is. I think she had a couple of off days, to be honest, Jerry where she just curled up on the bed and went to sleep for a few days. So, yes, I have a feeling, I have a feeling that's, that she was a little bit off for a couple of days. So there we are, yes, she's, she's eating fine now, and running around the house and waking me up when her cat bowl is empty. Uh, well, she woke me up this morning, actually. Eight, well, she tried to wake me up. Eight o'clock, she comes in the room, meowing. Meow. Meow. It's, it's a funny meow. Like that it is. <laughs> Richard said he's off to the gym, see you, see you around. Off to the gym? How long have you been going there? Not long by the look of you. <laughs> have a nice time at the gym. I'm going to finish now anyway. Um, finally today, we've got a new person joining us uh, via YouTube. Uh, Olivier, who watched a recording of Saturday's show, who says, um, we were talking about sleeping with your pets. And uh, Olivia says, uh, yes, I have to slip in between the cat and the dog. We have a little doggy and cat dramas in the middle of the night. <laughs> do you? <laughs> they don't start fighting on your bed do they? What can you? Aren't they? Fun? We love animals. We love them. Um, I'm going to suss you out some more and watch the rest of your videos. Um... Olivia also says, I too don't eat animals or buy leather, but my car is leather seats. Still, I didn't realise when I bought it. Well, then I can let you off for that one. But I am like you. I hate, hate cruelty to animals. I mean, I, I, I could do shows and shows about cruelty to animals and, um, and that sort of thing. I mean, I really could. Uh, but I think it's, you know, often I, I put things on my Facebook wall about... Uh, the latest cruelty story or factory farming and all that. It's all vile. It's all vile the more you look into it. I mean, it really is, Olivia. But people people choose to... Uh, people choose not, not, not to want to know, really, I'm afraid. You know, they, they, they kind of switch off when they're eating. They, they go out to a farm and they take their families. And, oh, look at the lovely little lambs running around. There. And then they go and eat one. It's just... I just don't get it anymore. I just don't get it. Anyway, thanks for your two emails and welcome along to our little show. Um, and uh, I think that's where we'll wrap it up today, boys and girls. Thank you very much uh, for watching and listening. Oh, hang on, one more comment here from 
Shaglama Post. That's a funny username, Shaglama Post, who writes on the um, uh, YouTube channel, Whoop, morning, see you Monday, much love, Alex. Alex! Good God! Alex from Belushi's, who came and sang for me Monday, are you with us as well today? Anyway, I'm going to go now. Thank you much for watching and listening. Don't forget the email address if you want to join in, um, and uh, I'll read it out on the next show. The email address is chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I've got some emails here that I held over um, uh, for a while. They will come up in Wendy's show, OK? One here from James and one from Wendy. It's always, always a pleasure uh, to hear from you via the email. Please keep them coming in, chris at unitedkingdomtalk.co.uk. I'll see you on the next show. Bye-bye now.